Hey everybody, I'm Corey Jones, owner of Safety Man Consulting, safetyman.co. Do me a favor, right off the bat, if you like this channel, send me some comments in the sections below. I get a lot of information from you and I can correct a lot of things that I said that maybe were misunderstood and I can get topics to continue to bring you the safety information in the future. So smash that subscribe button or when I'm teaching firearms, gently press that subscribe button directly to the rear with even direct pressure. All right, unfortunately in the news again, Lyft came out with some disturbing information that for about a three or four year period, they experienced over 4,000 reports of sexual assault or sexual deviancy, usually involving offensive touching. I've done numerous podcasts on this. I'm starting to get frustrated and sad that 75% of the podcasts I do are for young ladies getting assaulted or taken advantage of out in the real world. So I'm making yet another podcast to try to give you tips to keep yourself safe when you're in a ride share. These tips are universal. I don't care if it's a Lyft, a Uber, an Uber, a taxi, any place that you're not familiar with the driver, not familiar with where you're going, you've had a few cocktails, you wanna make sure you put these into practice. Now I have some notes to uh, my left, so you'll see me dipping over there trying to get these notes because I wanna get this stuff into your brain. If I repeat things over and over again, that means they're important, but I care. I don't wanna hear people being victimized. That's not acceptable, okay? So both Uber and Lyft have safety features where within the app, you can press a button that lets the company know that you are in distress. The driver does not know you press that button. You can also text 911 with your location and let them know that the vehicle, you can screenshot the vehicle, you can take a picture of the vehicle, you can take the vehicle's license plate number, the exact location that you are in the app and have the police meet you there and pull you over. I'm telling you, if the police get a call of a young lady potentially being assaulted in the backseat of an Uber, a Lyft, a rideshare, a taxi, or any other vehicle, they are gonna send police officers to you to help you. In the app, you can share your location with the people that you're meeting up with, a trusted friend, your significant other, you can share your location. They can watch you in real time. So if your vehicle stops for a prolonged time, or if it veers off course, or if anything happens, you can send them a message to have them directly send the police to you or to reach out to you via phone just to make sure that everything is okay. Sometimes we get stuck in traffic, okay? It's also a good idea to be on the phone with somebody, even if it's fake. Be on the phone with somebody when you get into the car, especially if you feel uncomfortable with that driver. Now, Uber and Lyft have both instituted a couple of different safety features. One, the Lyft cars have a pink sign in the front that says it's Lyft, and it can change colors to match the color that your app tells you. Uber has something very similar. Within the app, again, they have a safety button where you can press that if you feel uncomfortable. Take your app at now, look at it. As soon as you get in a car with an Uber or a Lyft or a taxi, look at it. Take a picture of the taxi driver's name on your phone. Okay, make sure you match the pin number because these apps give you a pin number to match with the driver when they go to pick you up. There is an incident that you'll see a little bit later in this uh, podcast uh, where a young woman was picked up, taken out into a field and murdered because she got into a vehicle that she thought was an Uber. An Uber. Sit directly behind the driver. If these offenses are caused by a uh, inappropriate touching. You don't want to sit in the front seat next to the driver. You don't want to sit in the rear seat or diagonal from the driver. It gives the driver access to you. Sit directly behind the driver. It puts you in a position of power and it puts you in a position to be able to observe what that driver is doing. Another thing I like to do, say in a firm but polite manner, you have to practice this, but introduce yourself to the driver. Say the driver's name from the app and tell the driver that he or she reminds you of somebody that you know. What that does is it lets the driver know that you're not gonna forget their name. It tells the driver that you're not gonna forget what they look like. And it makes you seem like an, an assertive person. We don't wanna be aggressive. We want to be an assertive person. So you can say, hey, Jeremy, you remind me of my cousin, Ed. That's pretty cool. Anyway, and then you transition within the same sentence. I'm going to put on my headphones. I have to take an important call from my boyfriend and his friends to go to meet us where you drop me off. 
okay? His football team just won, and they're going to meet me there. His MMA, mixed martial arts team, just won. They're going to meet me there. His soccer team, his hockey team. You want to make this driver think that there's going to be a bevy of big dudes sitting there waiting for you when you get out of that Uber. All these little things, you want to make that driver aware. We're not being aggressive. We're not even really being assertive. We're just planting these seeds in this driver's head that you're not the person to mess with, right? But you're not really going to make a phone call. You're going to listen. You're going to pay attention to where you are, where you're going, and what that driver is doing. If you do want to make a phone call, be on a phone call with somebody that cares about you, that can listen and let the driver know that you're on the phone. So if he or she tries to do something inappropriate, it's going to immediately be reported, okay? Don't listen to music. Listen to the music that's in the car. If you're listening to your headphones, your, your iPod, with all those things, you're not going to be paying attention to what's going on. It just takes your brain power away. You're not going to realize that you missed a turn. You're not going to realize that the driver is doing something different, okay? If and when you make initial a meeting and greeting and eye contact with that driver and something seems funny, cancel the ride. Cancel the ride. You can cancel the ride. Uber and Lyft will probably try to charge you for canceling an immediate ride. But I guarantee you as a young lady, if you call up Uber or Lyft or as a young man and call, I'm not a young man. If you call up Uber or driver uh, or Lyft or taxi driver and say, listen, I just didn't feel comfortable with my driver. I canceled the ride. I'm sorry. They're not going to charge you. They're going to refund your money and they're not going to detract from your rating on that. So that's very important. Follow your spidey senses. Follow your gut instinct. You've heard me say this a thousand times. Follow your spidey senses. If that driver does not seem like he's somebody that you would put your 12-year-old niece in, you don't get in a car either, okay? Remember, the goal is to be polite, but make yourself seem like the most unattractive, the most pain in the butt, the most annoying target that this person ever picked. You want this person to think that, you're on the phone with a football team that's going to meet you where he picks you up. You're on the phone with somebody who you just described the driver, the car, the tag number, where you are, when you're intending to get there. You made that driver aware that if he tries to do something to you, there's going to be a lot of things that are going to come his way. So remember, the goal is to be polite, but make yourself seem like an unattractive target that you're either going to fight back, be a great witness, or be a complete pain to try and take advantage of. Also remember that EDC podcast that I did. I'm going to link to it in this podcast. And EDC is an everyday carry. It talks about different weapons and improvised weapons that you can carry with you on your person when you're in an Uber, a Lyft, and you're going out for the night that are typically legal, like a taser, a stun gun, a tactical pen, things like that, pepper spray. You want to be able to have those things with you, have them ready to go. Just understand that when you pepper spray somebody inside of a car, it's going to affect you too. If you pepper gel or pepper foam, which I recommend to my clients, it's likely that it won't affect you as readily, but be ready to get out of that vehicle. So just to recap, introduce yourself, say the driver's name, say the driver's description, Tell the driver that there's a football team, a basketball team, a hockey team, a mixed martial arts team, a boxing team ready there to meet you when you get out of that destination. OK, make sure you familiarize yourself with the safety features in each app that you're going to use. Make sure you're ready to dial 911 and you know your location to get police to come to help you if something happens. Sit directly behind the driver. Say the driver's name. Tell the driver he reminds you of somebody. OK, and then pretend to get on the phone that you're talking to the people that you're going to meet you with. Share your destination, share your travel route with people so they can watch you live and let the driver know that you're sharing your route so your friends can watch you live so they know where to pick you up when you're getting to where you're going. Keep yourself safe, keep yourself alert, keep yourself assertive, make that eye contact, say that driver's name and let that driver know you are not the one to be picked on. Follow the other podcasts in my uh, on my page, uh, safety man consulting or safety man podcast they both go to different sets of podcasts that are all geared to keep you safe remember be ready and stay safe